everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of Yet Another Beer Show. I'm Colin. And I'm Casey. Today we're going to be talking about, you ever go to get some beer and you know usually get your standard, something you know you like. Right, you've got like one or two that are your favorites. Right, maybe you're in the mood for like an exotic thing that you've had before, but it's still something that you've tasted. Or you're with a friend who says, this is good, we should try this. And right, then that's right. how you try it for the first time. But you rarely just go by the label. You rarely just say, oh, this looks cool, I'll try this. Because you never know, it might be crap. You don't want to waste money right. on crap. So that's what I did. <laughs> I went and I bought two beers based solely on the label. The first is the Whip It Wheat, which has a cute picture of a dog on it. It is a pretty nice picture on the it bottle. Is. And I can like I would totally be in the store and be like, hmm, am I gonna buy the picture of wheat or am I gonna picture of a dog running through wheat? Yeah. Exactly. I'd make the same decision you would. Right. Um, or did. We're both very much <laughs> dog people, so we love dogs. And we know nothing else about it. It says below here, German style. It's a Hefeweizen. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> very good. I know. I'm glad you got that word. Yeah, and uh, it's by the Thirsty Dog Brewing Company. So I've heard their name before. I know they do a few different things. Have you ever had? But I don't others? think I've ever tried anything. So not a twist off. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, Whip It Wheat is an interesting one. And it's. I mean, this label is pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, it would be an interesting job to be the label designer. I'm mm. the label designer for a craft brewery. I've got this idea. That would be cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Hefeweizen uh, tend to be, you know, they're definitely, they're wheat beers, but they tend to be lighter than your traditional wheat beers. And it should hopefully carry some more fruit flavors and things. I mean, most people that are uh, beer drinkers will be familiar with whether or not they like Hefeweizen or not. And I'm sure that the flavor will strike you as something you've had before, even though I've never had Whip It Wheat before. But um, it's a, uh, I mean, just kind of first glance, it's not very much head on the beer. Um, no, it's no, it's really. kind of murky. There's not a lot of clarity, so that's probably going to have a lot of different unfiltered flavors and things like that. Um, that's my uh, genius. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you look at it, you can't see through this at all. Right. So um, it should have some strong flavors. That's usually the mark of a smaller uh, brewing company, would you say? Yeah, I think you'll find it more commonly in uh, craft breweries. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, let's give this a try. All right. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of um, non-distinct. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm not getting a strong... And not in the fact that it's a bad uh, beer, but just yeah. that there's not one flavor that really jumps out at you. A lot of times a beer will be... Uh, this is a hoppy beer. This is a malty beer. This is a bitter beer. Um, we've even done some which are, you know, taste like candy or are fruit beers. This one, kind of a very smooth flavor. I feel like I can sense maybe some pear. I'm just guessing. Perhaps. Um, you're not getting that at all? I, I Like I said, I'm not really... I mean, like, it's not bad. It's just I'm not getting much of any, like, strong, you know, no hop, no, you know, flavor. Just, uh, like, a standard beer. Not that that's a bad thing. No, it's, I mean, it's a good, it's good flavor. It's, um, it's just not really, nothing really, no component part of it jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. um, which doesn't, like you said, doesn't make yeah, it. Yeah, not, not a bad thing at um, all. I'm enjoying it. Still drink it, enjoy it pretty cold. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Definitely needs to be a cold. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good flavor. Yeah, I like it. But um, I think what we wanted to do here is go for two crazy label bottles in this episode so correct the first is the whip it wheat and it sounds like we both enjoyed but it's kind of not stand out in any way right nothing that the eye could say like oh the great thing about this whip it wheat is you know. right but again if someone has whip it wheat i'll certainly have some <laughs> <laughs> uh our second beer today is another one based solely on the label it's called big hoppy monster uh, it's an Imperial Red Ale, and it's from the Terrapin Beer Company, based out of uh, Athens, Georgia. And the label is, again, almost <laughs> almost epic. It's got this Terrapin from the Terrapin Brewing Company, and it's like st he's steering a big rig truck through some <laughs> sort of mountain wilderness. Yes. Um, he's smoking. He's smoking. So, I mean, I don't... Oh, and the stick shift of his car is an eyeball. Of course, <laughs> which is really, really great. As expected. So, the interesting thing about this is... If you don't know that it's a Terrapin Brewing Company beer, you think this is the Big Hoppy Monster, but it sounds like that's just the Terrapin. Um, maybe he takes on that alter ego when he gets in that car. Right, I mean, it's like the moon, the wolf's crying to the moon <laughs> shirt that, that has called him. And uh, Also not a twist off. All right. 
But yeah, it's definitely interesting. It's almost, you would guess, uh, if you since this is a buy the label episode, you would almost guess that this is a Christmas ale because it's got a lot of red and green on the label and it has this weird monster in a red suit, <laughs> you know, driving a truck. So, but um, hopefully, I mean, this is called Big Hoppy Monster. I'm expecting a, a hoppy taste. Hoppy taste. <laughs> very, very dark. Yeah, it's, it's almost, um, a lot of beers, most beers tend to be in that amber segment. Um, this is definitely more in the caramel color. Yes. Uh, almost chocolate color. So it looks... It looks like a light stout almost when you when you give it a pour. Um, similar to the, similar to some other beers, can't see through it entirely, but there's a little bit of light coming around on the edges. I've got a pretty thick head here too. And uh, oh yeah, strong. <laughs> yeah, it's strong. You can tell. So um, let's get into this one. Let's do it. It is. Um, my first reaction is that it's just thick. Yes. It's, it's almost like drinking milk. It's yeah. Like, not like whole milk, but maybe let's say <laughs> skim milk. You know, it's it's very thick flavor or feel. Very much. Very um, deep, dark taste. Um, doesn't taste like Guinness, but it gives me that similar kind of just that very, very deep taste. It, yeah, it has the um, the similar like uh, back of the mouth uh, mm. smoky flavor that a lot of stouts have. Um, it's interesting. It's... Um, What's very interesting is I don't I wouldn't say it's particularly hoppy. No, I mean it's a, you can definitely you can sense that it's there. It's oh, not, obviously, but it's not. It's not absent like in some of the other, like in Whippet Wheat, but yeah, it's not something where I'm like floored by how hoppy this is. Right, or something called the big hoppy yeah. monster. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it's smooth. But the sense I'm getting is definitely that this is more of a sipping beer. Have one. Yeah. Don't stick with it. I can. I can almost taste some alcohol in it, so I don't know if it's got an alcohol content listed, but... 8.3%. Yeah, my inkling was that it was going to be pretty high, and most stouts and, yes. you know, darker beers are. It's very really good. It's very good. It's, it's really quite good, but, yeah, don't make it your all-night beer. Um, yeah. Just enjoy it while you've got an opportunity. I think I also have to say, um, I feel like it tastes much better than it smells. Not that it smells horrible, but the smell isn't... Right, there's nothing, there's nothing really about the nose that's like, yes, yeah, I'm going to have some big hoppy monster. <laughs> yeah. But um, if someone just kind of brought this over to you and said, you know, this is a good dark beer, give it a try, um, you'd probably continue to try it. Definitely. Um, it's good. and So, I mean, it sounds like both successes, big hoppy monster, if you're in the mood for, I mean, not super hoppy, but stout type of atmosphere or taste. That's a great one. Uh, Whip it wheat. Still love the label. Still love the dog on it. It's uh, a good beer, but not a great, not a great one. Not a great one, but um, it was relatively inexpensive. So if you're looking for something new that's uh, fairly inexpensive, I think that's definitely worth a shot. Yeah. And it kind of makes you feel good about just trying things too. You know, like I mean, I guess you shouldn't base all your purchases <laughs> solely on the label, but. Well, I mean that's the thing. Uh, sometimes buying a beer by its cover essentially, to <laughs> take the book metaphor, <laughs> is uh, close enough. It, close enough. <laughs> it, uh, it works for you. So good choices again. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to go out there and buy something just based on uh, what the label looks like. Agreed. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. Uh, we have been yet another beer show. That's Casey. And that's Colin. And uh, continue enjoying some beers and check us out again at yetanotherbeershow.com. Take care. chocolatey but yeah not chocolatey <laughs> I, it's like it, it wants to be chocolate but then like yeah. the taste buds are like no no yeah no, there's no chocolate it's 